فهمت شو العلة ما لحقت معاهم فهمت شو تغيير بس أنا كنت ما حنني يعني ضغط على التلفزيون ورسالة الإعلام بس We revisit Nijud's lawyer, Shada Nasser, to try to find out what's gone on. She says she never imagined Nijud's life would turn out this way. Shada Nasser says she's always been a determined advocate for Nijud, but now she says she is drained by Nijud's case and claims Nijud is being victimized by her own family. Again, because they believe Nijud's fame should bring them fortune. The father, he was very upset because I come empty. He asked me, where's the dollars? I said, which, what the dollars? He asked me about the money. He said, I think you bring, you will bring for me one million dollar. I said, for what? He said, why I trust you and I give you Niju to, go, to travel with you to the state. There was never going to be a fortune, but generous people have donated thousands so Najud could go to a private school, a school Shada Nasser says Najud refused to attend. I know Najud, she was very absent from the school, and I spoke really with her father and her family, and I asked them to uh, control her and to ask her to go every day to school. But uh, they said, you know, we don't have the money for the transportation or uh, we don't have the money for the food. Shada Nasser claims the family received about $20,000 from donors and she says she has no idea what happened to the money. Nijud's parents say they've received nothing. <laughs> يعني شعرت إنه ظهورك في وسائل الإعلام سواء في التلفزيون أو في الصحف سبب لك كل هذه المشاكل أو مشاكل, مشاكل في البيت يعني في أسرتي في المدرسة في الشارع كمان يحكوا عني إيش المشاكل اللي سبب سببوا مع أسرتك يعني أهلي عمي أمي وأخوالي كلش إنني فعلت هذا كله طلع التلفزيون والجرائد But Najud feels she's lost control of her life, and all the scrutiny of the spotlight has left scars. And still, the glare of that spotlight continues, celebrated in the most extraordinary ways. Some months ago, here in New York, I had the privilege of meeting a young girl from Yemen. Her name is Najud Ali. Now, in another time, the story of her individual courage would not have been covered in the news, even in her own country. But now it is beamed worldwide by satellites, shared on blogs, posted on Twitter, celebrated in gatherings. Today, women are finding their voices, and those voices are being heard far beyond their own narrow circumstances. But Nijud now wishes her voice had never been heard, except by the judge who had the power to grant her a divorce. And so how does Nijud reclaim her life now? One woman says she knows because she's been there. Khadija Salame is working to help Nijud get her life back. Now a Yemeni diplomat, 30 years ago, she too was a child bride. But when she left her husband, she didn't have to endure the publicity that now haunts Nijud. It's good to, to talk about Nijud and to have her story come out, but the problem, it's too much pressure on her with the media. It's too much media. All the media from all over the world are coming to see her. It's, it's, it's hard for a little girl, and it's hard for her family, for the neighbors. Nobody understands, and she's, uh, I mean, I don't know how they say, devastated with all these things. She doesn't understand what's going on. She's a little girl. We have to understand as a media people that we should leave her alone now, really. Because now, if we really love Najud, we should just let her go to school and continue with her life, because education is the most important thing for her. I
And with that, Jude tells us she hopes that as ours were the first cameras to reach her, ours will be the last interview she does for a while. To get her divorce, Najut showed a character and strength not easily expressed by women in Yemen, let alone a 10-year-old child bride. She will need to muster all that strength and more if she's to finally reclaim her life.